We know bees make honey and people buy honey, but what are other things bees make that people buy? In this episode, we talk with Marianne from Rockbridge Farmstead about how she and her husband generate an income through their bees. Listen and learn some of the ways you can generate an income through beekeeping. This is the Homesteading for Beginners podcast, and I'm Mona Weathers, your homesteading mentor and coach. If you desire to establish a solid foundation for your homesteading journey, then you are in the right place. I'm here to show you how in a way that is healthy for you, your family, and your community. I'll share stories from the past 20 years of my own journey and offer you actionable steps you can take to start and maintain a healthy homestead. So we are back with another interview. This week, it's Marianne from Rockbridge Farmstead. They also have a podcast, Rockbridge Farmstead Podcast. Um, This time it was a little bit more tricky. Um, The recording and everything as we were recording the interview went fine. It was again on Instagram. It went fine, but when I went to extract the audio, I discovered that there was all kinds of overlap with our conversation. Um, This wouldn't be a problem if we had, if the recording went into two tracks, but it only goes into one track, so it just overlapped. So I had to do some mad editing skills on this um, interview uh, recording, but um, I hopefully it makes sense and it sounds okay. There's a couple times where we, you can hear the overlap of us talking. Um, I had to edit it a bunch, so if you want to watch the whole episode, or the whole interview go to Instagram, but it's also doing the same thing there too. So you have to be aware that uh, for some reason there was a lag time in our conversation and Instagram, like just, that's just the way it works sometimes. I don't think I'll be doing this for the next interview. I have not interviewed the last person yet, or the, actually I have two more people I'm gonna interview, I think, but I have not interviewed any more people. I don't think I'm going to be doing it on Instagram. Um, I'll just have to figure something else out, but it was a nice experiment. I always like to experiment. Um, It was great to see these people face to face on Instagram and it was a more comfortable uh, platform for me, but I think I'm gonna have to move on from that. But I I hope you can ignore the weird uh, cutouts and the weird overlaps and just enjoy this episode talking about bees and growing an income through bee related products. Um, so I hope you enjoy. Before we start, I wanted to let you know the free 101 homestead income ideas list is now ready for you to download. I've compiled a list of 101 homestead income ideas and divided them into three categories on homestead income, off homestead income, and online income. This resource is completely free and will prepare you for a free training I have coming up called the Two Week Homestead Income Digital Product Workshop. This free training is coming at the end of February. So grab your freebie today by going to healthyhomesteading.com forward slash homestead income. You can also find the link in the show notes. Mary Ann and I met um, on Instagram again, only um, I don't know who approached me, if it was you or Greg, but to be Mm -hmm. on their podcast called Rock Bridge Farm Podcast. And so I was on uh, your podcast and it was my very first um, podcast. I I told you the story, but (laughs) I'll tell you, I may share that later, but it was the very first podcast in a very long time. I was really nervous because I hadn't gotten my 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 voice yet, and I, we were just meeting. And you know, once once you meet yeah. somebody, it's a lot easier. Like, yes, we were on someone else's, and it was terrifying. Like, I had no idea what we were going to talk about, or what to say, or if I was going to say the wrong thing, or sound weird, or you know, it's hard not to be somewhat self conscious about that. So. I think that's totally normal when you're a guest, especially on somebody else's show. When you're doing your own, you kind of know what to expect. So you're like, oh, yeah, I'm in charge here, and I can ask whatever I want. (laughs) 
and you can you have the power to edit too, <laughs> which is you know so. Um, but I enjoyed that interview, and I enjoyed getting to know you guys, and um, and uh, so that was actually uh, that podcast episode was before I even, I think, I think it right launched mine. I, I can't remember you, if it was right when I did yeah. or before I did. I don't remember, but. Um, so it was good practice for me and you kind of boosted me, um, <laughs> I think That's with great. your yeah, listeners we're coming over to, to my podcast as well. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself. So, um, how um we live in Kentucky and that sort of thing. And we have lived here on our homestead since 2014. So that's about how long we've been homesteading. Um, as far as my background goes, I am from Detroit, Michigan. Um, and that's very urban if you don't, you know, people don't know where that's at. Um, so yeah, I had very little homesteading experience. Um, my mom always had a garden and that kind of thing, uh, but nothing like we're doing here. So a lot of those things I kind of just learned as we went along. Uh, my husband, Greg has some farm knowledge. And he's really good at like a fix it person. You know, he's really good at fixing things. He's a good mechanic. Um, and he just knows a lot of things about country living. So that was really great to have that, you know, coming into homesteading, but we still learned a lot. There was still a pretty big learning curve as far as, you know, animal husbandry and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we didn't really grow up doing these things, um, especially definitely not beekeeping. Um, but yeah, that was kind of how we started we in 2014 we started our little homestead here we have about three acres so it's not a ton of space but it's enough to do a lot with for sure i i i kind of chuckle when people say how much space they think they need <laughs> to homestead it's like you don't need Absolutely. that much space yeah, you can sure. do so much with such you know little space you just have to be creative um so, we uh, when did kind of dived in 2019 learning about beekeeping first before we got bees. Um, so in 2019, Greg is kind of the master researcher. He's always like reading every book, listening to everything there is to listen to, every audiobook. Um, and then <clears throat> he shadowed a friend and kind of learned from him just to see if he would like it because, you know, you could get all this money invested and then what? Like you don't like it or something crazy happens and you're like, that's not for me. So we started kind of learning in 2019 before we got the bees in 2020. Um, so we really haven't been doing this a super long time, but I feel like taking that time to learn before we did it really helped us in having the knowledge before. Granted, having experience and having the knowledge are two different things, but um, kind of knowing how to handle everything and manage everything and manage your hives and all that is super important before diving in, I think. Yeah, totally. I, I, I don't know if I've told you, I think I told you this story that I did get it. I almost got into beekeeping. <laughs> I was so close. I was like this close, but um, where we were living, uh, you know, I went, I started, I went to a beekeeping club and got the knowledge and was ready. But where, <laughs> where we were living, everybody's hives were swarming away and i don't know if that's because of where we were it's in the mountains of california and it seemed to be that they just were looking for food and it was they weren't finding it in the area and i was like i am not um yeah. gonna invest that money <laughs> my bees are just gonna fly away so i didn't do it but i do want to start that's one of the top things i want to do at this homestead here in georgia is start right. uh bees um, it's just a matter of time. Um, so where, like what, walk us through a bit of the process, like the basics on how to get started. Where's the first place to start? Um, you know, like what advice would you give someone? Started with just two in, in 2020. So that has escalated quickly. We had more than we had some flooding issues this past year, um, where some of the hives died out because they got flooded, unfortunately. So, but now currently in right now we have 21 hives. Awesome. So that, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. Of, you know, if you want to get goats, maybe read a book or two about goats or, you know, do a little research beforehand. Um, but then also I think it's really important if you can find a mentor or somebody who can kind of guide you at least for that first six months or a year. Uh, just just to be a resource for you if you're like, I don't know what the heck I'm looking at here. Like, sure, here's a frame of bees, but what does it mean? Because it can mean a lot of different things. Um, 
So if you don't know what you're looking at or looking for, yeah, you can do a hive inspection all day, but what, you know, you might not even have a queen. So it, it might be a moot point. Um, so having somebody to kind of guide you as a mentor, I think is a really great place to start and they'll give you any information that you need to know. And you don't have to do things exactly like they do it. Um, that's where the knowledge piece comes in. If there's something that you want to change, then you can do it a little bit differently if that works for you. There's lots of different hive styles. There's lot, you know, there's tons of different ways to do beekeeping. So I think finding that first step, finding a mentor is definitely important. Um, and then we always suggest for people to buy bees locally. Uh, they're already acclimated to your climate and the conditions of your weather. Um, and and most likely they're accustomed to foraging for the things in your area. So I would definitely recommend that if you can find someone else like on a beekeeping group, um, like on a Facebook group or something like that, that sells bees locally and buying a nucleus from them versus buying a package of bees. If you live, you know, say you're in Michigan and you wanna buy a package of bees from a company in Georgia, there's gonna be a huge shock for those bees. And they're not already most likely a nucleus. A nucleus is a small, colony of bees that's already somewhat established or getting established and that's better than a package of bees which is kind of like a bunch of bees just thrown together and sent your way um so if you can get something to set you up for the best success rate with a local beekeeper buying them locally um and buying a nucleus if you can or beekeepers called nukes um so if you could do that that's probably the best place to start of course, you'll need all of your equipment. You'll need, you know, a suit or a jacket, uh, all your tools, a hive tool. We like the J-hook hive tools are our favorite, um, and that's usually what we recommend to people. And let's see. All of your equipment, roughly, I would say, when you include, like, your jacket and all that stuff, you're probably looking at spending around $500 for one hive. And we usually recommend people to get two hives. Um, and that... That is because if you need to pull resources from another hive, you have that ability. Um, if you need to pull like a frame of brood to put into the other hive to try to make queen cells to make another queen or, you know, there's lots of ways you can do things, but you at least have two hives to make your, uh, your odds better. If something happens to one, you at least have another one. So, and usually you can even in like a backyard have two hives in like a city backyard. That Two hive advice is really good because I don't think I was ever told that um, when we were researching um, that, yeah. but it was also probably because I was thinking, oh, that's even more money. I don't know. You know, <laughs> like I was just very, I was just very reserved after I found out what was happening in the area. A lot of the things that we struggle with are time, time management, making sure that we can at least get into the hives every other week when it's not winter. Um, that's a real challenge for us just because we work a lot too. So Greg has an off farm job. He works 50, 60 hours a week. Uh, I have, I work from home. I homeschool the kids. So there's a lot of factors involved um, in managing our time. And sometimes, you know, you may not, you, you want to get to them every week if you can, but if you can't, then it's every other week, sometimes every three weeks, just to see how everything's going. Uh, if you can stay ahead of any issues that are in your hive, that's better. So time management is definitely tricky when you have bees. It's, yeah, it's not a daily thing like any other animal. You know, you have to feed it every day. But when you're, when you're doing all the inspections, it can take a little while. So that can be tricky. And then I'd say the other, it's right up there with time management, is heat. <laughs> when it's really hot, the last thing you feel like doing in the middle of July or June is putting on your bee jacket, being really hot, and being outside for three hours in the middle of the day when it's super hot, because it's better to look in the hives in the middle of the day when there are fewer bees in the hive. Um, so yeah, it's it's really tricky, that part. We really don't like being hot. So. That's so funny that you said that. I never even thought it can about be really the hot. heat in the, because I've never actually worn a bee suit. <laughs> so I've only seen people wear it. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't even think about that. And the other thing that you mentioned was the, the, for me, when I was looking into it, I'm not trying to like make nobody make people not want to do beekeeping. But these were just the issues that I was dealing with at the time. And I know that issues here, except for the heat, won't be the same as I had um, in California. 
but uh, was yeah. the fact that um, that it wasn't a daily check on. I thought that was actually not good for my life at the time because I felt I would almost forget but completely about them if I didn't have yeah. that routine of checking on them every day or something like you know what I mean like so that was also negative for me yeah. but in in some for some other right. people that would be a positive you know if you don't have to check every day but for me like if I don't check on them every yeah. day I'm gonna completely forget about them probably you know I don't know it's hard because we only have one day off yeah. a week together which is Sundays and so anything we have to do that's bee related in the summer, in the spring, in the fall, it has to be on Sunday usually. Sometimes on Mondays I can wiggle around my schedule, but it's, yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. very hard. The time management piece is definitely tricky and it's important too. So just as much as it's a problem, like if you don't have mm -hmm. the time to commit right now, then maybe it's not the right time for people to do that. I don't want to scare people away either, but if you want to have the best success, you want to be able to manage your your hives and if you don't have the time to do it then most likely something crazy is going to happen to them and they're going to die <laughs> you can't manage them um i mean there are definitely situations where a hive will just continue on without any management and that can happen but of course that's not you don't want to do that with any creature you don't want to just like leave it out there and hope for the best um so yeah right. i mean that's hard yeah, I think it's important to know the pros and cons because then you can walk into the situation with the right knowledge and, you know, and know that yeah. you're walking into something that might be a little challenging, but you're willing to do that, you know. I did a podcast episode on chickens and I gave the pros and cons list on that because I want people to know, right. you know, like you're not going to, you, there's going to be a period of time you're not going to get eggs and you're going to have to go and go buy eggs yeah. <laughs> from the grocery store while yeah. your hens are sitting there eating the food that you just purchased for them. <laughs> so <laughs> there's, you know, just knowing that is, is being able to know that. And then the pros would be fresh honey from your own backyard. That's always amazing. If you love honey and you want to have a fresh source, like there's no better. I don't, if you've never had a bite of fresh comb honey, like, it's the best thing you'll ever have. Um, or at least in my opinion, it's the best thing you'll ever have. So, of course, there's that benefit. And actually, a lot of people don't know this piece, but beekeeping is actually really therapeutic for a lot of people. It's, um, as Greg explains it, it, it kind of causes you to, like, slow down, watch what you're doing. You're more mindful where you're putting your hands. You're slow. You're watching the bees. Um, and they have, like, this rhythm, you know? Like, they have this cadence that kind of, put you into this zone um, when you're doing inspections. So I think that aspect can be really beneficial for a lot of people. Um, there's actually an organization, Hives for Heroes, and they are like a veteran, they do like veteran rehabilitation through beekeeping. So it's really great. I mean, there's so many ways that it can be helpful. If you're struggling with anxiety or you have a lot of stress, like it's, it's really great for that. I, just real quick, I had never heard that before, but that is so, that's so wonderful because there's all types of therapeutic things with, with animals and nature. Horses yeah. is the one that a lot of um, people with trauma have, you know, if you, it's like that rhythm that you're talking about, like Absolutely, when you match yeah. your, yourself to the rhythm of nature, everything changes. It just it slows you down. Like you're saying, I had never thought about that whole thing with yeah having yeah. to actually physically slow down so that you're not aggravating the bees, right? Like having to physically be slower, that's just, I never thought about it until you just said that. But yeah, just, you know, matching the rhythm of nature is completely different. Mm -hmm. And every animal, everything has a diff different rhythm. You know, a lot of people are scared of bees and I get it. I understand like the reasoning behind it. So when you say that bees are therapeutic, people kind of are like, what? That's crazy. Um, but if you're wise and you don't do anything crazy, most likely you won't get stung. You will get stung at some point if you're a beekeeper. That's just the reality of the situation. But it doesn't happen as much as people assume that it happens because you're being mindful and that's the whole part of slowing down and everything. Um, and then as far as having many hives, the benefit to having many hives, of course, is that you can make money off of it. Um, and there are... People often ask me that, like when I tell them, 
yeah, our plan in the future is that, you know, Greg would be able to quit his job one day and this just be his full-time job. And people kind of look at me like, can you make that much money on honey? And I'm like, well, no, not really. I mean, you can make money on honey, but there's like 20 different, that's just a number, but there's so many different ways that you can make an income off of this one thing if you think outside of the box a little bit, and it's not just honey that you can, you know, sell, there's tons of other things you can sell um, and make. Uh, and then you can also do classes, you can teach other people, you can do mentorships where you say, you know, if you pay X amount of dollars, I will be here on call, like, if you need help, you know, so that's something we hope to offer in the future as well. Um, and then selling nucleuses to other people who want to get into beekeeping. So there's lots of different avenues. Um, in addition to just honey, people don't really think about that as much. We're actually, we haven't produced a ton of honey to this point yet because we've been focused on building up our population. So we didn't want to take much honey or resources from the bees because they're building up their population and focusing on that part. Um, so hopefully in the next few years, we'll have more honey production hives. But currently we're selling um, like lip balms. We make herbal salves with the wax and herbs that we grow here on our farm um lotion bars and then we started doing candles this year as well so there's tons of different things you can make and there there's definitely a market for it people are interested in those products because like our herbal salves you know they have a few ingredients three four ingredients and essential oils and that, that's it so these are great for your skin like they're they're natural products so i mean there's lots of ways yeah to generate income that's not Again, that's not just from honey. So I love the beeswax stuff. I, I should be using more of it. And the oh, candles <laughs> that you had this past Christmas, they were so cute. I love them. Hopefully within the next few weeks. Um, so yeah, we'll have a couple mm. times a year, we'll do little launches with different ty types of candles too. But we sell other just regular old candles, you know. Tell us just a little bit about the candles and what makes them <laughs> different than other candles. Um, beeswax candles have a ton of benefits. Um, there is no like smoke or soot from a beeswax candle. There's no, you know, obviously it's only one ingredient. It's a natural ingredient. Um, beeswax automatically biodegrades. So like you melt your candle, you use it and there's a little bit left, just throw it in your compost pile. Um, and the glow is supposed to be like similar to like the sun, I guess is what, you know, the science says that. Uh, the glow of the candle is, is kind of like mood boosting versus like any other type of candle. Um, so yeah, there's lots of reasons. And of course, it's a natural occurring thing. It's not a bunch of weird ingredients mixed together, no fragrances. Eventually, we may do like a beeswax candle with essential oils in it or something. But, you know, a lot of people ask that, well, it doesn't smell like anything. I'm like, it smells sweet like beeswax. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't, I had never thought of the, um, the actually the burn like that, yeah that's a different yeah. color right yeah. like that's a different is that and what you're saying it's also burn, supposed to help itself. remove that's like yeah is it negative ions i believe it's negative ions from the air i always mix up like positive and negative in my mind i'm like okay it's it's a positive thing but they're negative ions the bad stuff in the air um there's there's like some studies behind that as well so there's lots of good reasons to have beeswax candles there's no toxic gross stuff in beeswax because it's just one thing yeah right yeah that's great so what advice would you give someone if they wanted to start beekeeping and yeah. then start to generate um, income taking the time to learn those things are really important before you jump in um and then as far as having a business i always kind of encourage people to grow slowly instead of we're going to take out a loan and buy equipment for 50 hives right away. And we're going to buy 50 hives. Like instead of doing that, you can grow yourself slowly. You can split your bees in the spring and make three or four hives from one hive. There's lots of ways to grow organically. And part of that too, is that you may not be able to manage 50 hives right away. Even if you think you can, there's a learning curve involved there. So I think growing more slowly and starting somewhere small, you know, sure, it's fine to have five, six hives if you're first starting out, um, maybe even 10, but if you, as far as the business is, is concerned, but if, don't get too overwhelmed, don't go out buying a bunch of stuff, like try to do it with what you have 
you know, currently and then dream ahead like six months from now or a year from now, I want to do this, this and this, or I want to buy this extractor or, you know, next year we're going to do better labels or whatever it is. I feel like, you know, people often get with anything, they, they want to just do it all and really quickly and have it work. But I think you have to take a little bit of time to break into whatever it is that you're doing. So even with beekeeping, I think it's the same, same thing. You know, you have to start at a manageable pace for you and not go crazy. <laughs> that's really good advice. And that's your, uh, more people need to probably hear that advice. Yeah, it's just more manageable and you're not freaking out like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do all this? And then you quit, you know, like, is it better to start small and grow, you know, grow small? Or is it better to start big and then just get overwhelmed and decide, ah, never mind, I'm not going to do this anymore. It's just like homesteading too. People buy like 30 different animals and then, right. you know, you don't have, you don't have the time or resources yeah. to actually do that. And then you're like, ah, nope, not doing that anymore. Rockbridge Farmstead, that's our shop name. You can also find it on our website, rockbridgefarmstead.com. Um, so it's linked on our website as well or on our Instagram. You can find it there too. Uh, we're most active on our Instagram, I'd say. And then, yeah, we have a podcast, um, that we share about homestead stories. So there's lots of different ways you can connect with us. Okay. That's the end of this episode. And we will be back next week with another interview episode. And I hope you come back and listen to our guest next week. And don't forget to download the free 101 Homestead Income Ideas list to get started on finding your ideal homestead income stream.